Hello friends, welcome back. This is a part 2 of this video series. In the previous video, I have shown how to buy a domain name. Now, in this video, you are going to learn how to point a domain name to a IP address of the server. And in the next video, you are going to see how to host and configure a website on a VPS server. I am going to continue the video from where I have left in the first part. In the first part of the video, we have bought a domain name with the name of sysofoff.com. Now press Windows plus R to open run dialog box and type cmd. This will open up a command prompt window. On the command prompt type ping and the domain name and then hit enter. Now if you see, I am getting the reply from 50.63.202.51. This is not the IP address of our VPS server. So let's open my GoDaddy account. From the products tab, expand that domains. Here you can see there are multiple domain names. We are going to manage the domain name which we have bought in our previous video. Let's click on manage. This brings us to domain details page. Here you can see there are three tabs settings, DNS zone file and contacts. Let us click on DNS zone file. Now we are on the DNS manager. At the A record section you can see there is one DNS entry and it is pointing to the following IP address. We are going to edit this DNS entry and enter the IP address of our VPS server which we have bought in our earlier tutorial. Now I don't remember the IP address of the VPS server which we have bought in our earlier tutorials. So let's open the godaddy.com on another tab. Click on the user icon and then go to visit my account. Now from the products section expand the servers. Here you can see the server which we have bought in our earlier tutorial. Let's click on manage. Ok. So now we are on the server manager. In the details tab we can check the IP address of our server as you can see over here. Let's minimize the chrome browser and check out the actual server which we have bought. Let's go to run and type mstsc. This will open up a remote desktop connection window. Here you can see the IP address of the server and the user credentials are already saved. Now let's click on connect. Click yes. As you can see we have successfully able to connect to our server. Now let's minimize the remote desktop connection window. Ok. Now let's go back to the chrome browser and I am going to copy the IP address of the server. Right click copy. Let us click back to our DNS panel. From the A record section click on the edit record button. In the edit zone record window paste the IP address of the server. After that click on finish. Then click on save changes. Here it says your zone file has been updated. DNS resolution may take up to 48 hours to reflect the changes but normally I have seen it takes around 5 to 10 minutes to resolve the DNS. Here in the DNS manager if you see there are also other entries which we haven't added. These entries are added by default and we can remove these entries whenever we required. Now here you can see a symbol of at the rate. It is representing our domain name. In the CNAME section if you see www is already mapped with at the rate. This means if somebody types www.sysoff.com it will point to our server IP address. Now let's minimize the chrome browser. Ok. On the command prompt window once again let's ping the domain name. Now as you can see when we are pinging our domain name it is showing the IP address which was previously mapped. This means the DNS is still not resolved. So what I am going to do is I am going to pause the video and resume it after 5 minutes and then we will check again. After 5 minutes. Now we are going to run one command which is ipconfig space slash flush dns. Basically this command will clear the local dns cache entry from our system. Now once again let's try to ping the domain name and let's see what happens. Ok so as you can see this time we are successfully able to ping and getting the reply from our server IP address. Let's ping www.sysofoff.com and let's see what happens. This time also we are getting the reply from our server IP address. So it completes the second part of this video series. Don't forget to watch the third part which will be how to configure and host a website on a VPS server. 
Hello friends, thank you for watching our this video tutorial. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to receive an email update whenever we post a new video. Share it with your technical IT friends. If you are facing any technical problem or have any suggestions, post your comment here or catch me on Google Plus, Hangout, Facebook, Twitter and Skype. This video tutorial is presented by Sachin Sami powered by itzoz.com and you are watching this video on YouTube channel Peter Kreis.